Computing the closure f plus of a set of functional dependencies, f, is hard. Hard in the computational complexity sense. Turns out it is actually exponential in the number of attributes. Fortunately, we only often just want to know if some particular functional dependency, like x determines y, is in f plus without computing all of f plus. And this can actually be done relatively efficiently. The way we are going to do this is we are going to compute the attribute closure of the left hand side x. We denote this as x plus. And it is, it is an attribute or closure with respect to f. x plus is defined as the set of all attributes a such that a determines a is in f plus. It's all the parts of the closure with x on the left with x on the left hand side. So we are going to compute x plus in a relatively simple manner. We initialize x plus to be just x, and then we repeat the following in a loop until there's no change. Sometimes this is also called a fixed point. For u determines v that is in f, if u is in x plus already, then add v to x plus. Just keep doing this loop until we have added all the attributes to x plus. And when we are done, we just check to see if y is in x plus. If so, then x determines y is actually in f plus. We can use this approach to check for keys of a relation. If x plus equals r, otherwise known as all the attributes of the relation, then x is a super key for r. But what about checking if x is a candidate key for r? In other words, if it is minimal. This turns out to be fairly simple as well. For each attribute a that is in x, we re remove it from x one attribute at a time, and check to see if x minus a plus equals to r. If none of the x minus a plus actually equals to r, then that means that every attribute in x is actually necessary in order for it to form a key for r. Hence, x is minimal. Let's look at an example of using attribute closures. Suppose we got this relation R, which has five columns, A through E, and we have got F, a set of functional dependencies. B determines C, D, D determines E, B determines A, E determines C, and A, D determines B. For our, for our first question, let's ask if B determines E is in F+. Plus. Well, let's look at B+, plus, the attribute closure of B. Obviously, B is in it trivially, and C and D are both in there as well because of the rule B determines C and D. So we've got B, C, and D. Now, iterating again, once we know that D is in there, well, we also know that E is also in there as well. And then we're done. So yes. Indeed, B determines E is an F plus, and we found that pretty quickly. Next question, is D a key for R? Is it a candidate key? So we need to see if D determines everything. Let's start with D. We know that D determines E, so let's throw E in there. We have D and E. Now E determines C, so we have D, E, and C. If you look at the left-hand side of the rules in F, there's nothing else that we can do at that point. So the closure of the attribute of D is D, E, and C. Since that doesn't cover all of R, so D, unfortunately, is not a candidate key for R. Another example. Is A, D a candidate key for R? Well, we have A and D to start with in the closure, and once we have D, we also have E because D determines E. And with E, we've got E determines C. And now with A and D, we also have A, D determines B. So we've got on the right-hand side A, B, C, D, and E. And so A, D does indeed determine R, 
since the closure of AD has all the attributes in it. But is it actually a candidate key for R? Well, to figure this out, we have to remove the attributes of AD one by one. So let's start by removing D. This gives us just A, and for A+, plus, if we look at it, the closure is just A alone, since A is not on the left-hand side of any rules in F. So the only thing we can determine from A is the trivial dependency, A. For D, well, D again determines D, the trivial dependency. D also determines E, and E determines C, and we are done. So D is also not a key by itself. Now A is not a key, but AD is a key. Therefore, AD is a candidate key and also a super key by definition. Finally, is ADE a candidate key for R? Well, clearly it's not because we already know that AD is a candidate key, so it's a minimum set of attributes already. Therefore, ADE is not a candidate key. However, it is still a super key.